and you know he's there. Now there's one on the bottom right there, see him? You got one under you. You're, he's gonna bite. Just, oh, he bit me. Stop it. See him right there? Get off my fish. There you go! Boss is, boss is hooked up! What do you want me to do? Anything? Yeah, I'm okay. Let me feel you out of the sun, Ian. Don't be surprised, this one's 10 pounds. I, I, that one's pretty close to 10 pounds. Yes, there he is. That's pretty close to 10 pounds, Mr. Bus. Yeah. You might want to put him, I think he's a keeper. Yeah, he's a keeper. You know why? Because this is episode 100, 100 fish, I am with a rookie to fishing, Heath Wagner. You may have heard him or not, but we are walleye fishing on Lake Erie. And let me tell you, we are catching loads today. Tune in, you're going to love it. There, there's some on me right now. Is that better? Nope. Another dink. Might be a keeper. Yeah, it's a keeper. Yes, sir. Keeper number one. Get him in the water Of course. Of course. Guess I'm asking where he's going. Another little keeper male. How do you know the male, Heath? He's little. <laughs> uh. um, honestly, you can't really tell, but most of the fish that actually come into Lake Erie right now into this basin that are that size are going to be your males. Your females will have giant bellies. Uh, I mean, I've caught females as small as 22 inches. So, that's not a male. What we are looking for. Out here in the abyss of Lake Erie, as Heath likes to call it, those. But we want to see lots more. Before we started fishing this morning, that's what we looked for. And that's how we come across our area and stay put. And then we actually put the spot lock on for the trolling motor and waited for these fish to come by and just used the, uh, the jigger wrap to pop them up. Oh, there you go. Took a while. He's little. Okay. Real little guy. I got him. That's a little better one. Yeah. Maybe. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a keeper. Oh yeah. That's a female. And there we go, third, uh, about a 19 inch fish, uh, third walleye of the day, couple dinks. Mr. Bus is soon to join us, I hope. You say they're not spawning yet, how do you know? It, it, normally when you catch them, uh, if they're really into the spawn, I caught one. They will both, go, <laughs> go, get in it. They will both be shedding eggs and silt. So they will let you know right away, you'll have white stuff all over you if they're really going at it. Job, Andy Bus. Yes, sir. We'll take that one. He ate it just like he was supposed he to, did. right in the nose. He did, right in the nose. Very nice. He was. I actually saw him suspended about six foot off the bottom. I had to bring my wrap up to him, and then lifted another two feet before he ate it. So my guess is he was about eight feet off the bottom when he finally ate. He, my friend, is going to taste good. Nice job, Mr. Bus. Rigging up our Rapala here. We've got a number seven right now, chartreuse and white. And we are just taking a minnow. You could hook them through the back, you could hook them through the mouth. Uh, they definitely have preferences either way, and sometimes you don't want the whole minnow. So when they get a little persnickety, we might only use half of them, we might only use his head. But right now, this is what we're doing. Hard. You got him? Got one? Yes. Yeah. He's not as big as the other. I'm going to let him go. Come here. Come 
<laughs> that McCain ride is just awesome. Look at that. That is Look at that. last year's big. That's just how it's supposed to eat, though. No. Yes, sir. You got one? What's the matter? You can slow down a little bit. I, I, it's my turn. Ain't gonna have it. What are you seeing here, Heath? We are seeing some walleyes suspended. Normally, when you're jigging, vertically like that a lot of those those higher fish like that you normally can't catch those are your trolling fish now and this uh, show me your bait we're working on the bottom all you see, right see that bait your bait that is yep see it uh hold on there yep. it, goes. There it goes coming up riding up a little bit of the current's affecting it right now getting it's it out of the screen it. That's it. there it is right, right there there's, there's bait. my bait and you just basically jig that rapala until you see a fish come up to it. And then you gotta kinda work the fish. Every day there's a different mood. And uh, if, if he decides he's gonna chew, he'll let you know right away. If he's not, he'll chase it around. And a good one to start with is a size five chartreuse coach. Size five or a size seven. There you go. What do you think it's going? That was that particular while I was on the buckshot. Switched up a bit, been a little tricky to catch lately. So we fed him. We fed him a buckshot. What is it? Buckshot? A buckshot. Just a minute here, I'll get this guy unhooked. Get a little camera shot on him and we'll, we'll uh, explain what a buckshot is. Buckshot's just a spoon. Carpet here. Buckshot's just a spoon. We're throwing a chartreuse and white buckshot with a red hook, and they got a little. Buckshots have a little rattle built right into the spoon. And sometimes that noise will help help uh, trigger a bite, and uh, sometimes just a little change like that when they're being a little persnickety will really put them in the boat. Good one. Yeah? Yeah, pretty good one. See yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, is this one up? You know, you know that's what they want when they do that. Sit. Oh! Andy, Mr. Boss has decided that he has a better chance of catching a fish if he sits me in the back of the boat. That's right. No, we got a bad transducer in our front graph. And now we, uh, all of our fish have come from vertical jigging. And now we only got one graph that's working. So we're back here on that transducer. And let me tell you, he, this is much more difficult to catch fish this way. It's a little bit more difficult to catch fish. Harder to keep them in the cone on the back. Oh, we got one coming though. Look at that. Look at that. But it, I am the hunter of fish, so Heath probably won't catch that fish, but I will. So you hold on now. I just want to describe a recent event that happened. We have, you know, we have been forced. I don't know. Fish. This is a necessary explanation, Heath. Mr. Bush, you can't talk right now. We have been forced. Hey, this is my show. We have been forced to fish off the back of the boat because we have lost the transducer in the front of the boat. And and what happened is I have discovered the sweet spot in the back of the boat that you can get your bait into the cone so that so that you can, you know, effectively catch a walleye. I had to reel in because I got bit and I thought I lost my minnow. And immediately upon me reeling in my jig and rapala, what? I lost my sweet little spot between the talent and the boat. And Buss's bait went in there, and he immediately hooked a fish. I thought that's, I thought, did I misunderstand the commu miscommunication there? I thought you were saying, go ahead. That, that, that's not what I was saying. 
His body language, his body language said, Andy, I can't catch him. Go ahead. Whew. That's what your body language said. Well, I got on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing for that. I got him to bite too. I had to check my bait. Uh, that's what you say. <laughs> that's what you say. You know, maybe you hook the bottom. I got I some rod action to prove it. I'm on. I don't know. Was I was able to retain my uh -oh. bait spot while you were messing around. Right, look out. We might get tangled. That's pretty good up here. Yeah, we do. I think you, I think you like the little yeah, chrome. Good, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just stole my fish. Upon retaining my sweet spot, I immediately. Hey, I told you when they want it. Man. Can you shove that out there? Look at that. Look at that. When, when you find the color that they want. Is that my blood? <laughs> I, it's, I hope it's fish. He's bleeding good. That's it. Got him. Got him. How's it feel? Like he's tangled up in a motor? Once I might get him out of the talon. Let's see. Oh, we got a bubba. At least a five. Really? Yeah. All right, we got big fish. Oh, that's a good. Fish. Where's that now? We'll scoop him up. Here, I'll get it. You stay on. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Don't you get that one? No, no, no. Let me show you how it's done, Heath. Oh, okay. I'll show you, man. No, you just hold on to the fish. Okay. This is how men do it. Wait a minute. What you call the hunter fish, Heath Wagner? Hey, that's it. <laughs> Come on now. That a boy. That a boy, Mr. Bus. That was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I will you. give his fish. Apparently, Mr. Bus has had a lot of experience helping his partners land fish. I know how to put people on fish. That's true. That's true. And as a matter of fact, I think this one counts for me. You're, you're completely missing the point of what I just said. No, I, I, I am very, this is why people love fish with me. They beg to fish with me. Like Heath, how many times have I got to tell him, no, because I'm taking out other people. I find it to be a little ridiculous to tell you the truth. Because I got to take care of other people, Heath. I, I got to go back to. There's more people than just you. I got to go back to why you were so good at getting that fish in the boat. Because you have a lot of experience helping people. Look at that tail. Get their fish in the size of your face. Did you want to taste that? <laughs> well, there you have it for another episode of Hunter of Fish. Thanks, Heath Wagner, coming out here to Lake Erie. Lake Erie and I have kind of a bittersweet relationship. I mean, it tried to kill me one time, but today it, it killed one of my graphs. So you saw at the end, it got a little creative catching fish there in the back, and, and uh, I lost more than I caught. But at least I showed Heath how to grab a fish out of the water like a real man. At least you got to teach him that. So he, I mean, he was my guide today. He's fish. been on this body of water once or twice before, so he knew what you're doing. And so I'm curious. We caught a lot of fish. I had a great time. We did. You would you assess this as a good day? We 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 did pretty good. We got a little bit of a late start this morning because uh, the boat ramp's full at Lake here. If you want to get out here at first light when the bite's the best, you better get here quick. I mean, if you, that means launching in the dark, getting out on a lake in the dark, you're going to experience most of the time the best bite first thing in the morning. We kind of caught the tail end of it. Still did pretty good up until about noon, and then as typical, at some point in the day, they're going to they're gonna slack off, and we still caught a few in between there, but uh, yeah. it was all about the Rapala today. Uh, yeah, it really was. See that beautiful um, thing there with your minnow on there? Hang, yeah. hanging, a, hanging a minnow off the bottom of it. The water's 37 degrees. Uh, 37 degree water 37 and degree water. what kind of fishing line is this? That is, uh, that's eight pound P line. Eight pound P line fluorocarbon yep. Yep. with a, a mostly yep. a braid line to use as yep. a bleeder. Yep. So he, if someone doesn't have any experience out here walleye fishing, mm -hmm. but they know there's a gazillion walleye out here. Right. What would you tell them how to go catch them early in the spring? Early in the spring, you need to, I mean, there's a, there's, there's over a thousand boats out here today. I was gonna say, bring binoculars to yeah. really yeah. narrow things yeah. down. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you know, the packs follow packs. Um, I find it best to stay off of a pack because 
you got a lot of electronic, a lot of ping going on, and uh, you know the fish will, fish will move away from that a little bit. You do a little bit better isolated to yourself. Um, there's so many fish in this lake. It's a big flat. They're not relating to structure. They're just swimming around, getting ready for the spawn, eating what's in front of them when they can have a chance. But more, they're more thinking about the spawn. So don't you're not you're not fishing structure. Feel free to move around, find a the depth they're in. Which find today what, was yeah. 27, 28 yeah, foot. Yeah, 27, 28 foot. And they were and really eating her off the bottom. Yes, they for were. For the most part, yeah. Except and for a couple. You can see them with your graph. So you're looking for fish. You're not looking for rises. You're not looking for contour lines so much. You're looking for fish on the graph. And if you see multiple fish on the graph, you stop the boat. The Altrex is a big part. You, you spot yeah. lock. You anchor. Uh, you need to keep that line vertical. Keep it in the graph. That way you know what it's doing. You know if the fish is 10 feet off the bottom or 2 feet off the bottom. We caught them a couple of different ways, high and low today. So that's the that's the secret to early Lake Erie fishing this time of year when the water's below, you know, 40, 42. And as we swing the other way, you can catch them on hair jigs and silver buddies. But right now, it's all about vertical jigging rapallos. And, and they had to have a middle on it. No yep. middle on there, and they, they weren't biting yep. at all. Usually below 42, 45 degrees. The light bait really really helps after that you can you can go away from it they'll get a little bit more aggressive but uh all in all it was a good day and uh had a great time i'll stay well you <laughs> being with andy buzz you knew he was gonna have fun I mean, yeah hey, everybody course. watching us right now is just oozing with envy and jealousy of your time with me so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the notification so you know the next time i put out a video thanks for watching until next time we will see you on the water Oh, the right one. Look at all that. Eight, I guess it's better. Eight, I guess it's better. Eight, I guess it's better.